As a user, autocomplete is always really great, whether it's on Google and you start typing in and it's giving you ideas of what you could search for, or if you're just trying to fill out a form and having different things to potentially pick from can be really useful. Sometimes we need to rely on JavaScript for these types of things, but there are a lot of situations where there are simpler solutions where you can do it with HTML only, and that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to another video. I'm so glad that you've been able to come and join me again. And if you are new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Usually I'm exploring the wonderful world that is CSS, but today we're going to be looking at a cool little trick you can do with just a little bit of HTML. And the element we will be using to do autocomplete actually has other functions and other cool things it can do. So we're also gonna take a quick look at those cool features in this video as well. So you can see I have a nice simple form on here where it's saying, what is your favorite ice cream? And I can come in in there and I can just put in, uh, my favorite actually is chocolate. That's the placeholder that is there, but say I wanted a caramel something, I can write that in. I don't actually have a submit button to submit it on this quick example, but you can put in whatever you want here and submit the form. And that's all great and good, but what if you wanna give people a helping hand and get give them to like, let them autofill some stuff for them? And one way we can do that is by coming in here and creating a data list. And data lists are populated with options. So we just do an option like that and the value, we'll do two for now and we'll fill this out a little bit more in a second, but we can have a chocolate come in there and then we'll also come in with a vanilla. So that's like the two most popular ones that anyone would choose from. Or at least that's my guess, or you know what, let's do the big three. We can add in a strawberry here as well, strawberry. So if we take a look at this, what I have right now is my label and my input that are right there and they're connected together. So even if I click on my label, it will jump into there because I have my four favorite ice cream right here. And then on my input, I have the idea of favorite ice cream. But I wanna be able to connect this input to this data list. So to be able to do that, what I need to do is come on and give my data list an ID as well. So we can do ice cream list. And then what we can do is come on to my input. And over here, I'm gonna write list is equal to ice, ice cream list, just like that. And nothing changes when we are looking at it right now, but look at this, when I click in here, and actually when I hover on top, you can see a drop down. This styling is unique to Chrome. Every browser does come with its own. And as you know, from probably styling forms in the past, uh, this is not something that you're going to customize. This is just the styling that comes with it. So if I click in here, you can actually see the list of options that are coming up and I can choose chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. And you might be saying this looks a lot like a select menu and in Chrome it sort of does, but if I start writing chocolate, you can see it eliminates the others and only leaves me with chocolate right there. And if I want, I can also just click and choose from one of them. So I could choose strawberry if I wanted strawberry. Now, just to show you, this does look different in Firefox. So here it is in Firefox. And if I click in, we don't actually get that drop down coming. But if I start writing strawberry, you can see it actually gives me that autocomplete that's coming in there and I can choose it from what I started writing. And where this gets a little bit more powerful, in my opinion, especially with this drop down style that does come from here, which might make users think they have to choose it, which uh, it, it is what it is. We can't do anything about it. That's the default styling for Chrome. Uh, but it's if we come in with some more options, let's drop those in here. And I just thought of one other that would be good to have. So let's copy vanilla. And we're gonna add another option here of French vanilla because some people prefer French vanilla and others prefer regular vanilla. Um, and I just want the word vanilla in here twice just to show you uh, what would happen. So if I come here again, we get that full list of different options that are coming up. But if I start typing in here, and I start writing vanilla, I just see the two vanilla options that come up. So we're auto completing down to those two remaining ones. Or if I start writing chocolate, I can see my chocolate, my chocolate chip or my mint chocolate chip there. So I think that's pretty cool and pretty handy. And once again, if I come over into Firefox and we take a look at it here, now with these new ones here, again, it's not auto-filled, but if I start writing chocolate, I can see all the different ones where chocolate comes up or even French vanilla. It's grabbing that because of the CH, there we go. And then I can choose mint chocolate chip or whatever I wanna choose from the list that is there. All right, so with that there, I'm gonna come down to here and actually I'm gonna on-comment this um, just so we can move a little quickly through this next one or the next two we're gonna look at actually. And this first one here is this input type of range, which gives us a range selector. And on there I put a minimum of zero and a max of 100 just to set the range uh, that we can have on there. But there's an interesting thing is you can actually have a data list for these as well. So let's uncomment this and we won't see anything really happen except these little lines will eventually show up once we set it up. So I've called this my preference scale. And what we'll do is we'll come on here and just like before, we can say list is equal to preference scale. 
And notice these little dots that have shown up. And the reason those dots are showing up are based on the values here. So I have a zero is my first one because if you have a range select like this, the farthest I know that there is zero. So I have my zero, my 10, my 20, all of those are showing up and they are really tiny. Uh, but we'll talk about styling that in just one second because while well, you can't really style these little lines, there is something that we can do. And what I'm gonna do here, just to show you one thing that we can also do, because when you do have data lists, you don't have to create multiple data lists to reuse them. So here, let's say this is my, and we'll call this the vanilla scale, and then a scale of one to 100, how much do you like vanilla ice cream, let's say? Just we have the two different questions coming in. And we can use the same data list. You can see the, the same ones are showing up here and here. And you could do the same if you had like your favorite and your least favorite. You could use the same data list for both of them, and it would work perfectly fine. So that is a nice thing that you can do uh, if you want that. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn off this vanilla one. We'll leave it in here if ever you want to play with this code. And so it's there for you to play with. But an interesting thing that we can actually do is by default, data lists have a display of none on them. So if we come on here and I select my preference scale, we could do a display and we'll throw a flex on there because we want it to flex and look right away they show up. And you can see what, what's actually showing up here is because I've included the values here. If I take that off of there and that remains blank, the zero will disappear. So in these cases, in your options, you actually do need to include some actual content so it becomes visible inside. Let's add a justify content of space between. And that will help space them out. You see where I'm going. Actually, just because the zero isn't all the way at the end, the zero actually starts here. Let's do a space around instead. And because the text is gigantic right now, let's also come in, say font size on here is say one rem, just so it gets to a little bit more of a, a natural number. Uh, you'll notice that like they're not perfectly aligned right now, but it, it's not bad. And you could play with this a little bit more with some positioning on them to get them where you want. And you could even come in like my preference scale option. And we could give those like a background of white padding of 0.25m or something, or maybe they're really small, we'll do 1m. And you get the idea. You can come in and actually like style this up a little bit. The only thing is if you do do this and you decide you want to style your data list and you're using the data list more than once, then you're in a little bit of trouble. Because what's happening is we're making this data list here actually visible. So this is in the DOM. So if you wanted to have something like this and have multiple ones really easily and quickly, you'd actually have to have multiple data lists in that case, which is a bit of a bummer. But kind of interesting and kind of fun that we can still do that. And just before we move on to the next one, just so you know, these little notches that are showing up, those little lines, those will show up in Chrome and in Safari. They won't show up in Firefox. Just different browsers do things differently, especially with form elements, as you probably know. Uh, those little lines, though, I don't think it makes too big of a difference one way or the other. But just to let you know, in Firefox, nothing will appear. Um, let's come down to this next one, though, where we can do a date picker. So it's just a label, or sorry, an input type of date. And you can see I have my, my date there. And if I click on it, I just get the default, the system default date picker, which shows up, which is perfect. I think these work really well. Um, these are crazy to make on your own. So it's nice to get that. But this is also where you can see I've created a data list already on this one. But with this data list that I've created here, let's turn it on. And um, I've already done my list as dates. And then here, my data list is my dates. And so they're linked together. And let's start with just one. Let's say, just because it's going to be a little cleaner and then we'll, we'll see what this actually does. So when I click there, it's going to show that date, which is an option, or give me the choice of other. This is super cool, right? So you can choose the date that's pre-populated or choose other, and then you can just manually choose whatever date you want. So let's go and bring those other ones in just so we can see what happens when there's uh, multiple dates, except it doesn't want me. Ah, there we go. So with all these dates in place, now if I go and look, you see all those are choices that show up. And then again, I can choose other. So I can choose the 2nd of February, or I can go back in and choose other right here and choose another date and just take a custom date. And if you're curious about the formatting of the dates here, even though in my system one, it's showing the, I think it's month, then the day, then the year. Here I've done year, month, day. And this seems to be the way that you have to set it up in your value for it to work. Because I tried a few different ones afterwards and they weren't working. Uh, there might be other options that can come in here. And I believe even if you do like a date time one, you can even set times as options too. There's a lot more you can do here. 
Um, so I think that's really cool and I really like that one. And while this data list is something that's a little bit more unknown, there are tags that we use every day on every single site we use that a lot of people actually misuse. If you want to know what I'm talking about, there is a video for you right here to check out. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, Adam, Johnny, Randy, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.